So you have talked about Rubisco, the protein in Lemnet, as the most prevalent plant-based protein on earth that's more digestible than pea and soy and algae. If that's the case, you know, why isn't everybody harvesting this stuff and extracting it? You know, how challenging is it? Yeah, it is incredibly uh, uh, challenging. The fact is that Rubisco is a photosynthetic enzyme, uh, so it can only be derived from photosynthetic organisms. Uh, it also reproduces itself through the photosynthetic process, uh, which basically means that as soon as you, let's say, remove a leaf from its nutrient source and thereby stop the photosynthetic process, Rubisco starts to degrade in the leaf material. And so you only have a very short time frame in which you can actually efficiently extract uh, the Rubisco from the biomass, let alone that you need to have a very delicate uh, a proprietary process in order to do so and that's what we've been focusing on building over the past couple of years here. We, uh, we have a very simplistic natural process where we don't use any organic solvents, we don't use any heat treatments, we don't use any acids or bases in order to extract the protein. What we basically do is we make sure that we rupture all of the cells and then step by step remove the impurities while, uh, until we end up with let's say the Rubisco protein. And what is so exciting about Rubisco in the first place um, from a food industry perspective? Yeah, I think it's a good question. I think if you come back to, let's say, where we are as an overall plant-based food industry, uh, what we're doing at the moment is we're primarily using upcycled waste streams, right? So if you go back to, let's say, soybean protein or if you look at pea protein, these are all upcycled waste streams that just happen to be available in bulk. and weren't necessarily once chosen to replace these animal-based proteins which next to their nutrition also have specific functional properties. And so if you think and look at Rubisco, what makes it very unique compared to both the animal and the plant-based proteins is that it actually outperforms uh, these proteins both on a nutritional level as well as on a functional level. Meaning that you can use, let's say, less of the Rubisco protein in order to create the desired structures that you want in food products while nutritionally, actually, it has the most desirable essential amino acid profile that outperforms both egg whites and whey, while it's also considered to be an allergen-friendly uh, protein, which makes it, basically makes it accessible to a lot of people around the world. So when it comes to the functionality of what you'd like in an egg white replacement, for example, what kind of functional properties does, does it have or does it need? Yeah, I mean, like if you think about, let's say, an egg white, you can use it to create meringues, right? So you whip an egg white, creates like this desired foam, um, but also what egg whites do really well is when you crack an egg in a pan, the egg white generally forms this white gel. And if you look at, let's say, Rubisco, uh, an egg protein generally needs to have, let's say, a 10% concentration weight per volume, whereas Rubisco needs, let's say, a fraction of that in order to create a uh, similar structure.